Hello everyone, my name is Irini and here's Pizzi and today we're gonna discuss uh, the topic of having a dog in a small apartment, especially in Dubai. So if you're thinking about having a dog but something holds you back, today I'm gonna give you some tips so you might consider it again. So if you are in Dubai and you're thinking about adopting a dog, there are many Facebook pages online uh, like shelter pages that uh, you can see like every day they renew their pages and you may find a dog that you like and then I believe the whole process is like 2000 dirhams and they check the accommodation, your accommodation, if it's appropriate to host a dog and then you're done you might find the dog that you want uh, through these pages just be extra careful because sometimes there are some spams and some pages that they promise to give you a dog and you pay them in advance but then there is no dog to give you so just just be careful about these things now if you're thinking about buying a dog because you want a certain breed and you want to know like uh, exactly maybe how long your dog is gonna live how you want it to look that's totally acceptable and there are many pet shops that uh, you can find the breed that you want uh, just one tip from me uh, please be careful because in dubai uh, they don't have papers normally that they certify the breed they don't have this pedigree that I knew that in Europe, when you buy a breed dog, they give you a pedigree, like pedigree papers. Here they don't, most of the pet shops. So you just see the dog as a puppy and they tell you it's, for example, um, it's a Pomeranian. So I recommend for you to ask for papers that they certify the breed because you pay 15,000 for a, a dog of a certain breed and you want this money to be this breed you know now it's bad to talk about dog and money but you you basically want to pay and get what you paid for my tip for you is to ask for the papers or if it's not possible just ask to see the pictures of the parents of your dog so if you see the mother and the father of the puppy that you're buying most probably it's gonna look like this so most probably it's pure breed. Now uh, we got Spitzy and the passport says Pomeranian, but she's not a Pomeranian, she's a German Spitz because we had this issue, but we love her so much and that's totally fine. Okay, she wanted to leave me. Okay, so let's dive into the tips. So the first tip and the most important tip I have to give for small apartments is just buy a fence the moment you um, take the puppy. So just put the fence in your apartment and define the space for your puppy. Another tip maybe is to fill this fence with pads. You know, the, the pot training is very hard. Potty training, pot training, I'm not sure. So filling the fence place with pads and removing them slowly will really help your dog define the space and the place that the puppy needs to pee, to poop, where the food should be, where the pee should be. So it's a very good start to start with a fence slowly. After a few weeks, if you feel comfortable, of course you can remove the fence. Or you can have it aside and then keep the puppy outside to play a little bit, always monitor the behavior. And then when you feel like you want to rest and you want also your dog to rest, just uh, put the puppy inside the fence again. So that's a, a very nice uh, start that you will do. So for the little puppy, the sleep and pee area would be inside the fence and then the play area will be in the living room. I know at the beginning it will be very hard because whenever the dog is out in the living room or in your areas, you really need to monitor because a puppy cannot really hold the pee or the poop. So you have to monitor at the beginning and help your dog always with positive reinforcement and with negative when it's appropriate to do so. And believe me, it's gonna work. 
I know at the beginning you will be like me that I want to quit, I cannot do it. I was saying that I really need to put the puppy in this training camps for two months, but then I felt like no, uh, we should be the trainers, the puppy should listen to us from the beginning. Uh, she should really get used to the place, that's her home, uh, and she should be trained here. Then we were considering about having a trainer here, but we saw it that slowly, slowly it, it was happening, you know, the potty training was on point. For sure there are always mistakes. You will always find mistakes and um, that's totally normal even for a, a, an old trained dog because Come on, you can not always like achieve it 100%, but 99 is always good. And believe me, it's gonna happen. Even though you feel like I'm done, the puppyhood got me like, I cannot do it anymore. Believe me, you will feel so proud of yourself because it's gonna succeed. Tip number two, also very important tip, is to have the surveillance camera, the CCTV at your house. So just putting a camera on top of the fence or if you leave your dog out um, in the living room will really help you relax a little bit when you are at work or when you are outside. You can always check uh, on your dog and see like what's the state right now. Is she sleeping? Uh, is she eating? Like did she ruin everything in the apartment? <laughs> we are playing at the same time. Okay. <laughs> Um, is she happy? She's sad, but unfortunately he, it's better to leave the dog alone and not always be uh, with, with the puppy even from a very young age because if you are always together then when you leave her or leave him um, she might have this or he might have this separation anxiety and they get very sad when you leave them they don't want to eat they don't want to do anything they just want to sleep they don't want to poop on the pad they just poop everywhere and sleep on top of it because if you're not there it doesn't matter to be nice for no one right um, <laughs> so that's one more tip just go do your stuff outside go do your work go out with your friends but a good tip is to always have the CCTV so you can check on the dog and see if you need to go as soon as possible or if it's fine, etc. Now for sure having a pet in Dubai is harder than having a pet in other places because let's face it, for three months the heat is out of this world so you have to have some tricks how to train your dog in this period. If you have a dog more than seven kilos, you really need to train the dog like two or three times per day. That's why I have some tips for you if you're living in Dubai or in UAE or in places where the heat is too much for your dog to go out. Maybe you can get the dog out of the apartment to do the needs that uh, they have to do, you know. But not really train outside. I don't know if it's even healthy for them to train in this heat. So tip number one for residents in Dubai having a pet in an apartment is, I know it sounds weird, but having a treadmill and teaching the dog how to train on the treadmill from a very young age since your dog is a puppy, start training the dog on the treadmill slowly slowly the dog will always define the place and don't worry he or she will not fall like maybe we did first time we stepped on a treadmill like i did for sure um, so it's a very good tip there are treadmills like especially for dogs we ordered one from amazon coming and i saw a lot of videos and many people recommended um, having this treadmill, you know, when you go to the parks and you socialize with people having other dogs and all the people having like heavy dogs told me that treadmill is a very good idea training like 15 times in the morning, 15 times in the evening um, and it really, really helps keeping your dog healthy. Tip number two for people living in Dubai is leave your dog in daycare 
there are many pet lounges where you can leave your dog during the day and your dog can play with other dogs and they can have fun together and you can also arrange like a um, spa day for your dog while living it there and you can trim the nails and do grooming etc always be careful because I know here in UAE it's mandatory for the uh, these lounges uh, to ask for you when you go if you have done to your dog of course the kennel cough vaccine or portadilla I think it's called and I know it's mandatory but not everybody's asking for this vaccine because this vaccine is not mandatory like for us the vet never told us that we have to do this vaccine so we didn't and a lot of people that I know they haven't done it so what happens if the daycare place doesn't ask for this if a lot of dogs are on the same area and it's a it's a closed area indoors then if one dog coughs then all of them will start coughing it's nothing like too serious or too much it's just a flu for dogs and what they told me is that your dog will cough from inside so you will think that oh my god uh, like my dog is suffocating she cannot breathe but uh, it's okay um, it's 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 gonna pass it's a flu okay and she cannot pass it to you so what i recommend because it happened to us unfortunately and we uh, took for her antibiotics and it went well so now we can do the vaccine and it's valid for six months but for sure if we put her again in daycare or boarding meaning the whole night for sure we will consider doing this vaccine like 100 percent and you have to do it i think three days before leaving your dog uh, for boarding like during the night so as i said unfortunately uh, spitzy got this kennel cough from uh, this indoor place with a lot of dogs so i will insert a small video here that we took to show to the vet while she was coughing and the vet told us that yes this is the kennel cough so i will insert a small video here so you just guys have an idea how it sounds like um i think it's very very helpful because not all the cough sounds it's kennel cough uh, so just have a look at the video now As I said in Dubai, there are very nice pet lounges that you can leave your dog for uh, daycare or for boarding and your dog can have fun while you are away, maybe you are at work or you are on a trip and you can leave your dog as many, way, as many days as you like and um, you can make sure that you give them the bed and the food that the dog is used to and for sure your puppy is going to have a very good time and other than enjoying the time with other dogs your dog will also train because uh, your dog will run around uh, she will play with uh, the workers over there with other puppies have some interactions socializing your dog is very 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 important just imagine having a dog in an apartment and like imagine if she has never seen other dogs she will be terrified one day that you will take her outside or she might be aggressive. One of the two most probably is going to happen. So it's very important to socialize your dogs, even with the heat. Just take her in a daycare and let her enjoy the duck company. I'm sorry I'm always saying she, but uh, Spitzy is a female. So for me now, dog is a she. I'm sorry for that. <laughs> Now, speaking about grooming and daycare and pet spa, I know it's a very big trend to groom your dog and give your dog these amazing hairstyles. 
and uh, really groomers love advertising this thing but what we've been told by the vet is that if your dog is double coated which happens to be with spitzy she's double coated then it's not gonna help grooming it's not gonna help prevent the heat from her body actually it's worse so they told us that we shouldn't really groom her to feel more cool to not to be hot because we were always saying we're gonna shave her for sure because she will not be able to stand the heat uh, but this is wrong because if your dog is double coated the extra fur on top will keep the, the heat away like the sun rays away and also the coat will keep the air flowing inside so it makes like a cooling effect for your dog when you shave the dog then the the sun and the heat is hitting like directly to the skin just be careful because if you're doing something that you think it's beneficial and it's not you know ask your vet if it's appropriate to groom or shave your dog for these very hot summer months. I just noticed like it's so dark outside. <laughs> um, anyway, I'll continue talking. For people living in Dubai and because I really want this video to be helpful for you guys, I will suggest my favorite places to get Spitzy out in the like nice weather months. So Spitz's first walk was in Burj Park. It's the park and the fountains uh, in Burj Khalifa. And dogs are allowed over there. Um, just the only thing is that dogs are not allowed stepping on the grass and playing on the grass. But if you want like a glamorous walk, like Burj Park is the best idea because you can enjoy your walk with your friends and your dog will be so amazed by the fountains. I remember the first time she was so scared because the fountain just went up and like she she immediately flew backwards. Um, but it's a very nice walk over there. I totally suggest the Burj Park. Uh, another glamorous one is the point in the Pal. And um, also another thing is that many restaurants over there are pet friendly so after doing your walk you can all also sit at the restaurant and enjoy your dinner maybe and for sure you would like to leave your dog without the leash at some point and let her free because we were always going out with a leash like this and we were like oh we really need to, to set her free a little bit and see her behavior what is she gonna do is she gonna run away from us is she gonna leave us so i recommend again in the colder months in Dubai to go to uh, JLT dog park so over there it's a closed park and you can just enter uh, I think everybody can enter and you can just go there and there are some uh, little obstacles for dogs little games you can play there is sun there is grass uh, also a lot of dogs come there and I believe really really your puppy will be so thankful for this park and this walk outside and I, it's one of my favorite parks at JLT Park like it's so casual you can go every day again just try to socialize as much as possible really uh, from the colder months Another park, I think it's the called the Greens, also a closed park, um, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it became a residential park, so just check before because we've been there once and it was nice, but I'm not sure anymore. Anyways, in Dubai there are many places you can walk your dog with your leash, um, but I'm just giving you some extra ideas if you want to uh, leave him or her without the leash. Now, I'm pretty sure you all know the Amal Quen, the beach over there that um, you can leave your dog and free and there are many dogs over there, big dogs, small dogs and your dog will be a mess in the sand but you will feel like very free and you will enjoy it, I believe. So I totally recommend, like if you're not aware of Amal Quen, uh, because it's very popular it's a place there called holidays that uh, became very popular last year so i totally recommend to check it out i'm sure it's all over social media so for sure you you know about this 
and just go there and leave your dog free but before guys please socialize your dog and take her out take her to um, parks let her socialize with other dogs because if you go to Amal Queen and you have to be with the leash around and be scared that your dog might bite someone uh, don't do it you have to be comfortable leaving your dog without the leash I know it takes time um, to have her to the point not to bite not to be aggressive on people or she might be always so hyper and other people will be scared but she just wants to play you know hard work pays back so if you really train your dog always with negative and positive reinforcement i think it's gonna pay back to you for sure there will be always damages at home or mistakes from the dog because come on you never broke a plate at your house you never did anything like uh, a mistake so your dog might do mistakes and that's fine just we try to diminish these things as much as possible and what matters is the relationship with your dog so in a very small apartment you will be so attached believe me and I think at the end of the day, you will not regret it at all. If you're thinking about having a dog and it holds you back because it's a responsibility, yes, it's a big responsibility, but if you feel like, okay, maybe I can sac sacrifice some time and fit this responsibility in my lifestyle because I need the company of a dog and I will feel proud having a dog and like be able to train the dog and your puppy will love you back so much uh, anyway i really hope this video is helpful for you and see you on my next video bye guys